Shalom and blessings, warriors of Yahuwah and the truth. We are on video number 30 of um, Nimrod's secret identity, the greatest conspiracy on earth. Um, <clears throat> we are on David Dawid or Daoud. The contemporary English spelling of this great ruler is David. And often people say David or Dawid, thinking this is a more modern Hebrew posture. Modern Hebrew is different in some aspects from the authentic 22 letters. <clears throat> the sixth letter, U-A-U, U, has morphed into Wa, W-A-W. The influences of foreign languages have caused this letter to become Vav, V-A-V, but it is simply U. This name is spelled with three letters, Dalet, U, Dalet, or literally D-U-D in our English. The Hebrew letters Dalet U Dalet will be transliterated Daoud to suggest the pronunciation Daoud. Which symbol have people bowed down to? Crux seal of Dawid or Daoud, sorry. <laughs> Daoud. One of these is a solar symbol, the other is a king's name. And then you see the menorah in this uh, in this uh, carving. The name Yahuwah is associated with his word, and he guards his covenant. The menorah is physically a light with seven branches. The seven lamps can, abstract, can be abstractly thought of as his, his eyes, as we contemplate his perspective of how all mankind should live. The menorah also shows us the seven festivals, which represent the process of redemption. These annual observances are shadows of, of how Yahuwah is redeeming his bride, Yasharal, Israel. The inspired word gives us, man, gives us mankind's true history. As you read it, you are actually reading the very thoughts of, our, of your creator. Take his heart into yours as you read. He wants you to know the truth and how much he has done for you. He, we are, who are followers of Yahusha are being healed as if we were in a Nazarene Hospital. <laughs> Hopefully we, we see improvement each day. Here is a modern parable about how we should consider one another. Touch of the Physician, a modern parable. Alright, the touch. Parables are dark sayings. The meaning of the components is hidden so that comprehension is not possible for outsiders to interpret the parable properly. The components of a parable, when properly revealed, enable the hearer to interpret the meaning. Meaning of symbols in this parable. Hallmark. Outward sign or signal. Family crest. Primary trait. Name. The identity that specifically defines someone apart from all others. Leper. A sinner slowly dying a horrible death, and this represents every person in this world, or in the world, sorry. Light, Torah, the words, the instructions of Yahuwah, by, by which every person is to live by. <clears throat> Physicians, the general reference to human teachers of all anti-Torah patterns. The physician, Yahusha, the light of the world. Touch, indwelling of the spirit of Yahusha, the well of living waters. The touch of the physician. A land was filled with many leprous people, all having spent their wealth on physicians that could not heal them. They were hopeless and turned away from all physicians, considering them to be frauds. As one of the leopards lay dying, he prayed a final prayer that someone be sent to help the others to be cured and live normal, healthy lives. Immediately, a brilliant light enveloped him and a kind of presence came into him. The light brought him joy, peace, and healing. He realized that Yahusha, the creator of all things, had healed him because he prayed for others, not himself. He had learned to love others more than his own life and had been begotten from above by the touch of the physicians. Rising up in complete health of mind and body, the former leper went to share what had happened to him and told everyone the name of Yahusha healed him. Each leprous person who accepted the name of Yahusha received the healing light and arose to continue the work of sharing the name of the physician, who delivers from death and is the light of life. 
Certain lepers would not accept the words and receive the and received the light, became bitter and envious, and began to malign the former lepers who worked among the leper community. They accused them of all kinds of shameful activities, evidenced by the fact they associated with known lepers. As more and more healthy people heard about the work among the lepers, support for their work came in from all over the world. Kindness, encouragement, and love propelled a great restoration. Love became the hallmark between all those who accepted the light, and they gave praise and honor to the touch of the physician that took away the leprosy of death and brought his life into the darkness of a dying world. Yehukanen 3, 16-21 For Allahim so loved the world that he gave his only brought forth son, so that everyone who believes in him should not perish but, but possess everlasting life. For Allahim did not send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not judged, but he who does not believe is judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only brought forth son of Allahim. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and men love the darkness rather than the light for their works were wicked. For everyone who is practicing evil matters hates the light and does not come to the light lest his works should be exposed. But the one doing the truth comes to the light so that his works are clearly seen that they have been wrought in Allahim. The Nimrod Matrix. The first man to be worshipped as a mighty one, or G-O-D, was Nimrod. The, the world order is a scheme to make everyone compliant to a Nimrod Matrix, or mode of conduct. If we are worshipping Yahuwah, we are obeying his commandments. If we are worshipping the Nimrod Matrix, we are working much harder. We are running into a steeple every week to pay someone to tell us we don't have to obey baking birthday cakes, lighting candles, and making wishes to a genie or a jinn, boasting blessings with lifted beverages, carving pumpkins, and dressing up for the witch fest, erecting trees in our homes, pretending it's not about the sun's birth, the sun in the sky, coloring eggs and eating chocolate rabbits, decorating the outside of our home with lights, pretending that an authority figure has power vested in them, to pronounce us married when it was Yahuwah alone who joined, that, joined us together in marriage, and so on. If you look through your family photos, they tend to involve occasions the Nimrod Matrix has obliged us to swarm. Stop swarming on the traditional occasions and the family bonds are wounded severely. And he, answer, and he answering said to them, Well, did Yahshayahu prophesy concerning you hypocrites? As it has been written, this people respect me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain do they worship me, teaching as teachings the commands of men, the traditions. Forsaking the command of Allahim, you hold fast to the, to the tradition of men. And he said to them, Well, do you set aside the command of Allahim in order to guard your tradition? Mark 7, 6 through 9. With Yahushua's words in mind, what traditions have come to replace the commandments of Yahuwah? Christmas, Easter, Sunday, Halloween, Feast of Dead Saints, that's Halloween, sacraments, steeples, bells, crosses, eating unclean animals, apostolic succession, celibacy, veneration of human remains, images, which is idolatry, holy water, indulgences, Trinitarian ideas, prayer beads, prohibition of true name Yahuwah, Yahusha, prayers to the dead, necromancy, infant baptism, and much more. Men have set aside the commands of Yahuwah for their traditions. The sign of Yuna, three days, three nights, Yuna and Yahusha. A sign can be a gesture of assurance or a mark of authenticity that proves something to be true. Yahushua was asked a question by the scribes and Pharisees concerning his authority to teach, Matthew 12, 38-40. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. But he answering said to them, A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no, and no, sh no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Yuna. For as Yuna was three days and three nights in the stomach of the great fish, so shall the son of Adam be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. People have misunderstood how Yahushua was in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. B. 
because they think preparation day, preparation day, only refers to their day called Friday. When understood within context of Yasharal rather than Christianity, the preparation day referred to at Matthew 2762, Malachi 1542, Luke 2354, and Yehukanen 1931 is the day before the Moed or appointed time of Matzah. This preparation is for the 15th day of the first moon. Passover lambs were slain on the preparation day, the 14th. Um, okay, next time we will be reading Abib 15, which will explain what I was just talking about. Um, I, I probably should read it with this. Um, okay, yeah, this one, I'll read this one with this, and next time we'll go on to... We are his witnesses, and the oldest lie of them all, um, the lie is you don't have to obey. Okay, Abib 15. The 15th day is an annual Shabbat rest day. So the 14th of every first moon is always termed a preparation day. The Greek text captures the idea of the approaching day as high Shabbat. In the words, or in the word megas, M-E-G-A-S, which is concordance number G3173. And it says, Yehukanen uh, 1931. This has nothing to do with the Shavuah weeks of seven days. Only the moon. The op opinion that the term preparation day is always implying a Friday is an error. The actual day of the week is irrelevant. We know the day Yehusha was impaled was the fourth day of the week, several hours after sunrise. This was the Roman Celtic day called Woden's Day. Carefully counting the days and nights from the time Yehusha was entombed, we find the following chain of events. Nachdemon and Yusuf took Yehusha's body from the tree at the close of the day, just prior to sunset, because at the approaching sunset was the first day of matzah on leavened bread, Abib 15, a high day. Woden's Day at sunset began night one. The next sunrise began the day one. Thor's day at sunset began night two. The next sunrise was day two. Frigga day at sunset began night three. The next sunrise began day three. Total three days and three nights. At sunset, as the weekly Shabbat drew to, to a close, Yahusha rose from the dead. The discovery of his resurrection was not until the following morning when Miriam and Migdal arrived on the first day of the week and found the stone had been removed and the body was missing. This morning was first fruits. Yehusha Kohen Hagadal ascended to the father as the wave sheep offering. This is why he would not allow Miriam to touch him. He had not yet presented himself as the wave sheep. His resurrected body was the first fruits offering what the barley sheep had represented. Yahusha and the twelve were eating a meal at the beginning of the fourteenth day of the moon, and it was a tears day evening and night. It was the same this same night he was arrested, and the following morning he was whipped and put on a stake. That afternoon he died as our Passover lamb. The confusion is not helped by the fact that Roman days begin at midnight instead of the proper time at sunset. This misunderstood by Christianity has been the reason that many of us have often said they, they can't count, but it's really only a stronghold of false teaching and being removed from the true faith of the Mashiach for so long. They have a form of piousness, but de deny its authority over them. They have no Passover, Festival of Matzah, Shavuot, Yom Teruah, Yom Kephar, nor Sukkot, the shadows of redemption, things to come. By dancing around with their Sunday, they missed the foundation because they did not build on it in the first place. They mo modeled their observances after sun worshippers, abandoning all the festivals of Yasharal, Yahusha's true bride or wife, casuistry, deceptive reasoning. Um, and then m memorial of Yahusha's death. The three days and three nights in the tomb are the sign of Yuna. Proving by this sign, he is the Mashiach. 
the resurrected body of Yahusha is the offering of first fruits, also known as the wave sheaf offering. This is why it happened the morrow after the Shabbat, what Christians call Sunday morning. The resurrection was rehearsed by the high priests of Yasharal each time they cut the first fruits of barley and waved it. Yahusha made it a reality. He ended the need for ceremonial sin offerings forever. In the first month on the 14th day of the 14th of the month between the evenings in the Passover to Yahuwah, and on the 15th day of the 15th of this month is the festival of unleavened bread to Yahuwah. Seven days you eat unleavened bread. On the first day you have a set apart mikra. You do no, no servile work. And you shall bring an offering made by fire to Yahuwah for seven days. On the seventh day is a set apart mikra. You do, sorry. Yeah, it says it again. Okay, you do no servile work. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Yashorah, and you shall say to them, When you come into the land which I give you, and shall reap its harvest, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. And he shall wave the sheaf before Yahuwah for your acceptance. On the morrow after the Shabbat, weekly, the priest waves it. And the morrow after the Shabbat, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, you shall count for yourselves seven complete intact Shabbats. Until the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, you count 50 days, then you shall bring a new grain offering to Yahuwah, Leviticus, Yuakira, 23, 5 through 16. Teaching that the wave sheep offering is always on Aviv 16 is an error since on Aviv 16, Yahusha was in the tomb, fulfilling the sign of Yuna. Next time we will be reading, We Are His Witnesses, the oldest lie of them all, you don't have to obey, um, Day of Yahuwah. All humanity will be screaming for their lives. Um, and then there will be like one or two more lessons out of this book. And then, well, yeah, one or two more lessons. And then we will be moving on to Who is Allah, the Hindu, um, the Hindu connection. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the lesson today. Um, and now it's time to praise Yahuwah. Mm. This is my favorite part. Right. Yahuwah is with me. Yahuwah is for me. Yahuwah is greater than all of these things. If Allah is for me, then who can be against me? Seek him, and you will find him. Knock, and the door will be opened unto you, unto you. I love you all with an everlasting love, as our Abba Yahuwah and the Shamayim loves each and every one of us. Shalom and blessings, warriors of Yahuwah and the truth.